Hi friends, it's Michelle Geomatics, and today I'd like to show you how you can symbolize data using a few different techniques in ArcGIS Pro. As you can see on my screen, I'm using ArcGIS Pro, and I have some earthquake data for the state of Indiana. Let's take a look at the attributes. These earthquake data have quite a few attributes, including a year field, which shows the year of the earthquake, and they go back into the 1800s. And there's a magnitude field, which is a numeric field. So let's take a look at what we can do. First, you'll notice the points on the map show single symbol renderer, which is the default in Arc Pro. So when you drag your data into the map or add it in, ArcGIS Pro wants to automatically assign it um, a symbol. And so it chooses one and sometimes that's good, you're ready to go, and sometimes it's not so good. So let's take a look at some things we can do. So I'm just going to pop over into the Symbology tab. And you'll see right up at the top where uh, it currently says Single Symbol, you have a drop down of many choices of how you want to symbolize your data. Let's try using unique values based on year. Maybe I want to be able to look at the map and quickly see uh, which earthquakes happened in which year. So I have unique value set. I'll choose the attribute field of year. And the software again does some default behavior. So it goes through and it applies a color scheme to each unique year in the data set. So now every year has its same uh, entry, which creates a really sloppy legend. And that's not quite what I wanted. So here's another thing you can do. You can group the values. So I'm just going to click and scroll through all these values from the 1800s to the last one, which looks like this one here, 1899. Hold down my shift key to select all of these and then uh, right click and group these values. So it's going to put these into a group and then same thing for the 1900s. I'm just going to grab all the values from the 1900s that are in this data set. There aren't that many earthquakes in Indiana. And then uh, do the same thing for the 2000s. So I have three groups and this will make it a little bit easier to uh, see what's going on in terms of year. So let's make the symbols a little larger. They're kind of small. To do that, I'm going to come to the More button and go to Format All Symbols. It takes me over to the Properties for the symbol where I can just increase the point size. Let's raise it up to 8. Click on Apply. And now I've got these nice large dots. I'm just going to go back and change the color scheme to something that looks um, that'll stand out a little bit more one from the other. We'll see, sometimes you have to do this a few times. In worst case scenario, you can go in and manually change each color. All right, so for sake of brevity, um, that, that will work. So now I can quickly look at the map and see not only where earthquakes occurred, where the epicenter was, but I can see um, the year, kind of get a sense of when the earthquake happened. And you'll see what the legend looks like over here. It's a grouping of all the values. If I wanted to change that to be something a little more user friendly, I have this label field over here in the symbology pane where I can come in and um, type in whatever I want. So I'll just change these to the, the centuries and it cleans up um, my legend. I, I see that it has the all other values, which is a default thing that shows up. If you just right click on that and remove it, it'll take care of that. All right, so that's one way that I can symbolize these data based on uh, the year using a unique values renderer. Let's try now to work with the magnitude of the earthquake. And we'll take a look at a couple of the quantitative renderers. The first one I want to show you is graduated symbols. And graduated symbols 
looks at the range of data from an attribute field that you specify. So it shows by default the map number. That's not the one I want to use. So I'm going to select my magnitude field. So the software looks at the range of magnitudes in the attribute table and it breaks it into classes and then it assigns um, a point symbol, a graduated symbol, which means it goes from small to large to show the different categories. And you can see over here in the table of contents how this would look. So it goes from a tiny little dot for magnitudes that are less than or equal to 3.17 on up to the larger symbol for magnitudes that are less than or equal to 4.97. Now I can, um, I can work with these. Let's take a look at the histogram and you'll see the spread of the data. Uh, the method that the software is using to uh, classify my data is called natural breaks. So it simply looks at the spread of the data and the clusterings and um, has an algorithm that it uses to define the breaks where the classifications should go. But I can override that. Um, first I'll just make four categories. So we'll choose to do four classifications, four categories, four classes. So I'm going to change this 4.11 value. I'm just going to double click on the value here and change that to 4.0. And then the next one up, it's at 3.58. I'll double click it and say 3.5. And then um, the last one that's here, I'm going to double click that and just say 3.0. Okay, so I see now how my legend looks over here and I can come back to the classes tab and fix the labels if I like. So this one says less than or equal to and it's got so many zeros on here. I'm going to get rid of some of those zeros, just go down to one decimal place for each of these just to clean it up. And for the last value, it reads the highest value in my data set, which is 4.97. I'm just going to change that to 5. There we go. And if I wanted to change the color, the symbol, I could simply click on the template symbol icon and select a different color. So I could make them be a red color and then click apply to see how that looks in the map. Um, or I could go back to the gallery and choose a different symbol altogether. But the circle works quite well for earthquakes. I don't particularly like the red color, so let's go back to a lighter color. With this classification scheme, which again is called graduated symbols, you end up with a picture in the legend that shows each size circle on the map. So when I'm looking on the map and I see a particular circle, I should be able to match that exact size to what I see over here in the legend, in the table of contents. Let's look now at another quantitative renderer. Quantitative meaning it's for numeric data. And this one is called proportional symbols. So it's very similar. So I'll choose proportional symbols and again the software defaults to using the first numeric field in my table which is called map number. Um, that's not the one I want. I want magnitude so I'll just tell it to use magnitude. And again you see there's dots on the map. This time they're a purple color. That's okay for now. We'll leave it like that. But the dots behave differently. First you might notice over here in the table of contents that there's only one dot showing up in the legend instead of the categories that we saw a moment ago. This is how proportional symbols work. So with proportional symbols, the software says, okay, choose a template that you like. Here it's a dot. And tell me the minimum and the maximum size that the dots can be. And I'm going to show the dot on the map proportionally relative to the other values in the magnitude field for this case. So let's change the settings here a little. I'm going to increase, decrease the minimum size to 3, and 90 is much too big here. I'll change that to 25. And you'll see that the map looks very similar to how it looked when we used graduated symbols, but something different is going on. I'm going to make that maximum size a little bigger, 
just to really emphasize the difference between these. So I'll make it 40. So what I see now are circles of many different shapes on the map. But when I look over at the legend, I don't see all these different sized circles portrayed in the legend. I see what's really a guide. And the guide says, this is four. This is what a four looks like. And then I have to kind of use my imagination to imagine um, if the circle is much bigger than that, then you know it's bigger than four. If it's much smaller than that, then it's proportionally smaller than magnitude four. So this is how these um, proportional symbols work. And you can see again the histogram. If I come over to the classes, uh, you can see some information about that here. But let's take a look at something I can do in addition to showing the, the size of the dot representing the intensity of the magnitude, I can also add color. So I'm going to click on the very symbology by attribute button and choose color to vary my symbology um, also by the field of magnitude but now adding some color to these. So now I've got two things going on to really emphasize that there's um, an increase in magnitude. The size of the dot on the map intuitively implies that the bigger the, the symbol, in this case a dot, the more intense the magnitude. And then the color, a darker color implies more intensity. So it's helping to really um, bring that point home to the viewer. So I hope that helps. This is a few ways that you can symbolize data in ArcGIS Pro. Thanks for watching. This is Michelle Geomatics saying goodbye for now.